I am now posted online um, for next week, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be here, and I'll, I'll record the whole class with no audience. I'll just teach myself and answer the questions myself too, and I'll record it and show it to you guys. <laughs> well, you guys will come, right? <laughs> you guys will come next week? No. Somebody will, somebody will, right? Yeah, um, well, I, I think a lot of you guys are like, it looks familiar to me, and it's been a while, so uh, I, cannot, I cannot remember your names, but faces are very familiar to me, so I know you guys are all my, in my FinThrow 1 class, um, so uh, only a couple of students, it seems like uh, I never had you in my classes before. But anyhow, uh, let me introduce myself, and this is, JUFinance.com. This is my website. Yeah, I came from China. Uh, I came from Beijing. I came to this country like 20 years ago. And I used to be a civil engineer working for Motorola in China in a long time ago, building the chip factories and cell phone factories in China. And uh, the, it's an old version. Cell phone, it's a pretty big one. It's like a, a brick. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I was with my colleagues uh, working in China and building the beepers, the beepers for Motorola. You guys know beepers? Yeah, so, uh, so that's, and then I came to this country and then, and then changed um, my career completely. So, so I spent five years in Texas Tech getting my PhD in finance. And then after I graduated in year 2009, I joined JU. And then, so I, I've stayed here, um, spent almost 10 years at JU now. So, but it's just like yesterday. It went so fast. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, sorry, like I haven't posted the syllabus into our uh, blackboard because because uh, I, I think most of the students uh, I had you guys in my class before so uh, I, I think like you guys if you want to find the syllabus you know where to go so I didn't post it uh, posted like uh, on blackboard I know I should but I just like this semester um, it was, I was too busy I was teaching like for the second week and plus the morning class I'm teaching six classes <laughs> so it drive me crazy and two of them are online classes and each one has like close to 25 students online adult students so it just drive me crazy to answer emails and give them help they need so uh, sorry for not giving so much attention to you guys but I've posted everything online uh, if you click to the class website gufinance.com gufinance.com and here so so you will find uh, the stuff here yeah you guys had my classes before I'm using the same website the same structure and I will post everything into the class website this is what I plan to do for today uh, for week one and uh, since it's recorded I hope it's working yeah, I hope it's working. And then so, and then I'll post the videos and link to the class website also for you not not able to come to the class uh, and for next week. <laughs> and 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 you can you can watch videos at home or at the resort somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So if you click on the syllabus so you will see the syllabus since this is the last time this class will be offered for an eight week kind of format and uh, after this class and everything will be uh, will be like traditional way so there's no ADP finance major anymore so this is the last time and uh, so we have to get everything done so quickly in eight weeks so we have a midterm and we had the final and uh, so I have to leave sometimes for you guys to take the final and midterm in the classroom. So that's two classes for next week. And uh, since almost all of you guys won't come to the class, right? Who will come? And there's no extra credit for coming. <laughs> no one's coming, right? So I have to cancel next week's class also. But I'll give you, give you guys something to do while you are gone for your holiday, for your break. And this is exit exam. And there are 100 questions, but you can work as a group. 
you can divide the questions among your friends and uh, you need to give me the correct answers. You can use next, next week to work on this set of questions. Yeah, and so it covers like FIN 01, 420, 435 for this class, um, but it's, it's all basic, um, basic questions related to finance. So uh, this set of questions is, is we, we chose a question between me and another professor, Mike Adam, you guys don't know him, he's the investment professor and he's retired. So we, and Bob Almas too, FIN 05 questions are also here. So we come up with 100 questions as a pool for the exit exam. So I need to give you guys an exit exam. Um, I will pick 40 questions out of the 100 questions in this set. And then, and then, and then I'll, so you guys know the questions, you should figure out the answers by yourself. And then questions in the exit exam will be the same. But you need to figure out the correct answer yourself. Yeah, the hard part should be doc, Dr. Amos' class, the financial statement analysis, I think. Yeah. Um, anyhow, so this is, this is what I plan for you guys to do next week. Uh, you, guys, you guys try to come up with the correct answers for the exit exam. If you click on it, you will get the word files for the 100 questions. You can work together as, as one group, I don't care. Or you, you should, maybe you want to um, have through four students and divide the 100 questions into through four parts and then each of you worked out um, part of the set. And then, and then you can also check with each other for the correct answers, like between groups. But anyhow, um, uh, you don't have to let me know like how, what is your correct answer. But however, I'm going to grade it. In the end, I'll give you access exit exam and I'll grade it and I will know you get it wrong or, or, or correct. Yeah, and this will be part of your final grades. I think it's, uh, if you look at the syllabus, so this is the syllabus. Um, so what those questions do? Well, I'm not going to collecting the the answers from you, but I will give you the exit exam with the final, and it's going to be 10% of your overall grade. So you'd better just get all right. You get all these questions answered correctly, so you can earn the 10% of the total grades. So, but see, you, you have the question, you have the time to work out those questions one by one, and then um, and then uh, exit exam is the same. So you're saying we need to use these hundred questions to study for the exit exam? To study, yeah. Uh -huh. how, do we, how do we know whether we're right or wrong on the questions? And well, for the tough it? ones, you can check with me. Okay. Yeah, but not one by one, but you can check with me for the hard ones. But anyhow, so this, this is 10%. The weight of this one for your overall grade is 10%. So this is just encourage you guys to spend time to study for the exit, exit exam. Since uh, we're, not going to, we're not going to meet um, in campus next week, so I assume you guys can use uh, next week to work on this set of questions, 100 of them. Yeah, you click on it so you can find it. So I think 60 questions are, oh, 30 questions are from Dr. Alma's class. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is the, those are the questions from her, from him. Yeah, so. Yeah, so we have two exams, um, midterm and final, and we have homeworks. We have six case studies. <coughs> six case studies. Yeah, but, but for the case studies, um, we will have some time. Like uh, for case studies, like today, we will have two case studies. So uh, we will try to work, finish all of the, both of the case studies together in class. Yeah, so I've posted both case studies online in the class website. You see, 
chapter 3, this is our first case study, and also chapter 4 case study, this is the second case study. So uh, the, I always, just for the case study, this is a way for students to learn by just working with me together. So uh, we will work on the case study together. So after today, after the class, uh, you're supposed to like almost finish those case studies. You may need to uh, spend more time to, to completely finish it, but you should finish most of the case studies when the class is over. Yeah, but we may go very fast, but you can watch the videos that if you need some extra help. Okay, so this is the schedule for, yeah, this is the schedule for, for this. Uh, so today we will do chapter three and chapter four, that's accounting part. Uh, it's like a cash flow statement and all these. Yeah. Okay, this is temporary schedule for this class. But for week two, uh, so uh, I guess for week three, we have to do three chapters. So we have to do chapters three, uh, five, and six, and also seven. But we have to just finish one case study. Um, before the midterm. Midterm is going to be week four and we have another final, we have a final in week eight with exit exam. And the assignments will be due before midterm and, and you just turn it in with your midterm. And also for the final uh, due, assignment due before final, you just turn in the rest of your assignment with your final. Yeah, so this is a temporary schedule. Um, do you guys have any questions? Okay, so. Midterm and final setup, is it multiple choice? Multiple choice, and maybe short answer, short essay questions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, some conceptual questions. <coughs> yeah. Um, uh, what we can do? Uh, this way, like I will, just like uh, the international finance class uh, we did, uh, I'll give you conceptual, conceptual questions. You do that part first, and it will be closed book, closed notes part, and then we do the calculation part, it will be open book, open notes. Yeah. And then for the conceptual part, it will be true, false, and multiple choice, just like we did in um, 415, international finance class. So because for the calculation part, you need your computer or your calculator. So, uh, so, so we'll do two parts. Yeah. But the weight of the exams are not so heavy, right? So it's not, uh, it's not, it's 55%. And uh, you should do very well for your homework and for your case study for the exit exam. So that's add up to 45% of your total grade. So, and this is, uh, I will consider A and minus and plus. These, I will just, if you're, if you got 89 and you get A minus, if you got uh, 90, you will get an A. I will just follow this uh, scale, grading scale. Okay. Yeah, uh, anything else you need to know? Um, yeah, this is a textbook. Uh, I know if you are an athletic student, uh, the school will pay for your textbook. You may want to get the, this version, but uh, if you are paying for textbooks by yourself, an uh, older version is fine. So I don't know if you get it or not, get a textbook or, or uh, you, you, you can rent it. Uh, but, but anyhow, um, this is the textbook information. The website for this class is, oh, yeah, you go to jufinance.com, you can find the link to this class. And I will post everything um, to this class website except your grades. You can find your grades still in Blackboard. Okay, so this is my uh, office, 
1188 and this is my uh, cell phone number and and this is my email but excuse me for not answering your phone calls because I received so many telemarketers um, phone calls is so annoying so I, I just I just I just decided not to answer any any phone calls like uh, the number seems to be like unknown to me so but send me a message or send me an email yeah. so do you have any questions this is a syllabus yeah uh, cuz cuz you have I had you guys in my previous classes so uh, we play the stock trading game so uh, I set up the stock trading game again for our class so this is a link um, this is a link for for this class yeah so you guys enjoy playing the game you want to play yeah, to give you incentive, let's just do that again, and uh, I'll, I'll just like, let you skip the final and still give you a good grade if you do well from the stock trading game. Stock trading game. Um, yeah, again, it's the same rule. Uh, it's the same way. You, you go to, uh, if you're not new to this game, yeah, uh, so you can just log in and click this click on this link it will bring you to the game and if it's new to you and you have to set up the account um, if you have problems to set up the account and find this game and you can ask me or ask your 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 classmates because they had experience before by taking classes with me in the past yeah so so uh, you guys know how to play the game if you had me as your teacher before if it's uh, new uh, to you so you can come to me uh, I can give you some help or uh, you can it's actually pretty simple like uh, uh, for example this one yeah um, you can like like you just put the stock's um, name or the symbol here like um, AAPL is the symbol for Apple this is the symbol for Apple so so now you find the Apple stock now you can click on trade now and uh, you can drag uh, to to the to the to the um, to the end on the right, and I can only buy a hundred shares of Apple because I, I I put all in to one of the stock uh, yesterday when I set it up. So I I don't have much money left. But anyhow, I need you submit the order this button, and it's done. So anyhow, yeah. Hi. When can we start? You can start now. I, I set it up yesterday. I set up this game yesterday. The game will be over. I think it's on the either 16th or 17th. Yeah. Is there a password that we should use? Yeah. Uh, here. Here. This is a password. You you have to you have to sign. You have to create one account and then confirm your registration and then um, f and then click on this link to log in and then and this is a passcode for this game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And Tony. Yeah, he was he was doing. Uh, he made a hundred trade again today. <laughs> he was it was six hundred and ninety eight trade. Now he he's so bored. He he did another a hundred trade today. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony is the student in uh, you guys know him right yeah yeah he's uh, he's done something really crazy he's making a hundred trade when he get bored that day <laughs> so I guess it's so boring to him today so um, anyhow so that's how much money he has made in a week period and what he has done is he buy penny stock he buy the cheap no no sh he he short sell the penny stocks every day and he never hold stocks for overnight and he buys them during the day and then quickly sell them so 
So he made uh, well, it's just good timing for him. It doesn't mean it will work for you guys. It's just like when he started the game, it's just the right time for him to do this. It's very risky. <coughs> Anyhow, so you can skip the final uh, for, for example, top three students from this class. Uh, you can skip the final and earn 100, 100, 100 points for the final. But you still have to take the, the exit exam. But you can skip the final. So just to give you some benefits for playing this stock trading simulation game, it's all free. Everybody has a million dollars plus another, uh, another million dollars you can borrow. Yeah, so you have $2 million in your pockets to play with this kind of uh, simulation games. It's fun, right? Yeah. All right. I don't recognize anybody. Yeah, uh, has won this game before in my other classes. And I don't think anybody won this game before. Yeah, but anyhow. Um, you may try Antoni's trick and just buy penny stock, but not buy penny stock, you short penny stock, you sell them. It's highly risky, Yeah, and, but you don't, you don't hold it for too long because penny stock is very risky. So the price goes up and down a lot. So, all right. Sounds fun, right? No? Yeah, so you can start now, you can start register. you can start tonight to register for an account and then start trading tomorrow. You can put your order in tonight, but you won't see the results until tomorrow morning. So have fun as a password for this game, to join the game, and you will see uh, the you will see like how other other classmates are doing. So you're competing against them. You want to be, you want to stay on top, on the top of the game. So you can skip the final. You don't care. You can just play for fun. Just play for fun. Okay. So do we have do we have any questions? Anybody for the syllabus? Sounds like a lot to do, right, for the eight-week period. You guys are all graduating, right? You guys are all junior? No, you guys are all senior. Yeah, senior. Okay. So I'll see you guys at graduation. Congratulations to almost just get it all done. It's so long, right? But. <coughs> Okay, so so are you ready for ch the first uh, for chapters three? You guys are ready. Okay, and uh, chapters three and chapters three is about financial statement analysis, and chapter four is about the. Um, ratio analysis. I know a lot of you guys are like a double major in both accounting and finance, right? I know Joe you are, Matt you are, yeah, uh, you guys are all accounting majors, so so it should be pretty easy to you guys. For the other students, uh, it, it might be more, sounds like complicated, um, to help you to understand the structures of the cash of the cash flow statement, income statement, and balance sheet, and I create uh, these templates or calculators here. So this is the balance sheet. Let's just have a quick reveal. This is this is the balance sheet, uh, the structure of the balance sheet. Yeah. So so we have assets and has to be balanced with liability and equity. And since you guys are all familiar with this, so I don't want to spend much of the time then to, to explain to you. To use this calculator, for example, you can just put the numbers in, um, whatever it is. So you see, so it tells you total current asset is how much. Those are the three major components of current asset. And we have fixed asset, for example, less depreciation, so this is this will give you you use uh, 
property planning equipment minus depreciation, it will give you net fixed asset. And then so that's total asset, you add this up, and that give you the total asset. For liability part, and so you also you put in a number, whatever. So it adds up to the total current liability. And for long term, um, so long term debt, and uh, there's only one item. And total liability equals to long term liability plus current. So that gives you total, total liability. And that's the equity part. For example, um, it's uh, um, common stock plus, plus the return earning. So, so you see if I, and then it adds up to total equity. And then so you add up the total equity and with total liability, it will give you total liability and, and owner's equity. So for this, this one to work if something is wrong here, total asset and and total liability and equity has to be the same. So if it's not the same, so and there's this there's a message to you it's wrong, try again. Until like it is uh, the same. So this is how you use uh, this balance sheet. Do you have any problem? This is a simple version of the balance sheet. Do you have any problems? You try until like the two parts are balanced. The numbers are the same. This part and this part has to be the same. You all know this already. And uh, for the income statement template, and uh, we, we all know income statement should be like this, right? So we start from sales um, minus the blue part will be calculated by itself. And then, I mean, for example, anything, and, and then you put down the numbers here, and then it will do its own calculation and then you will get net income and return earning, taxable income, and EBIT, all these. So you guys know what they are, right? Any questions? No? Yeah, <coughs> and also I have here cash flow template. So, um, so just a, it has to be a simple version because I cannot just make it complicated. I just have to just consider the major components for each uh, category here. So this is cash flow statement. Again, um, you see, again, it will just automatically calculate, do the calculation. This is cash flow statement. It has three categories, right? Cash flow from operation, investment, and financing. So this is a cash flow statement. And this is ratio analysis. So um, you put down information for balance sheet and income statement. And uh, these, these um, part will be calculated automatically for those ratios. Yeah, so it's just convenient. Um, when you are working on the assignment, you can use it as a reference. This is a ratio. Those are the major ratios uh, we run into most of the time. Yeah. Do you guys have any problems or questions? Okay, so these are just for your reference. You can find the links um, in the website, um, in the class website, or you can go to the, here, um, it's in at gufinance.com under financial statements. So you see those are the, those are the ones for a uh, financial statement part. Uh, I made these myself, so if you run into problems, you let me know, I'll fix them. Uh, it's a simple version, it's a simple version, because uh, it may not be uh, satisfactory to, for complicated uh, cases, but uh, I just want to visualize the information and how to do questions. I just want to make it, visual, make it uh, easier for you just to see what we're doing. Okay, so this is this part. Okay, um, what I plan to do is, let's uh, watch, I want to start with this video, how to evaluate a firm. Uh, I want you to think about what are, are the six signs of a bad management or bad company, and uh, which one is the hardest one?
for investors to catch, to pay attention to, which one is the most in, important one to the investors. Now let's watch then this video made by Phil Tang. Uh, thank you. Uh one investing that I'd like you to follow, right? You guys probably know this already if you've been following this. If you haven't, here they are. Meaning, mode management, and margin of safety. Those four things will dial you in to a company that's wonderful and on sale. Now, when you get to the third M, management, you're going to have to make sure that the manager or the management team has talent and integrity. I'm telling you, you really want to get this one right. Otherwise, if this company has debt, debt can kill this business, the management team can come out of it on the other side with more ownership of the business than they had when you went into your investment, and you've just been wiped out. And I'm not kidding. This does happen to people, and it's happened to me. So take a little lesson, earn the hard way, that the management team has to have talent and integrity. Integrity being the key word. I always don't mind if they don't have that much talent, because I figure you want a business that's so simple to run that basically an idiot can run it. Because, you know, the company's around long enough, eventually an idiot will run it. But if that idiot at least has integrity, they're going to tell you what's going on. And that's what we need to know from them. Now, you get a sense of whether a management team has integrity or not by reading the CEO letters. Those are letters put out every year. And by looking at the shareholder's report, which is literally just that. It's a report to you, the shareholder. It's called the 10K. Now, you can just follow one more thing. You can also listen to their quarterly earnings report. Just Google the name of the company, quarterly earnings report, and you can get on and listen to them live. And they'll explain what their business is doing. And then, even more fun, you can listen to some of the best analysts in the world who are following that company ask questions of the CEO. Now, you can also feel kind of when you're looking at all this, whether they see themselves as completely responsible to you, the owner, or if they're just giving you the report because they feel they're obligated to do so by law. In particular, I really watch that, that, that annual letter to see if they are just putting in a bunch of hype, it's, which is honestly what a lot of them do, right? A lot of them do. So this is what you need to think about. When you can't understand their quarterly report, if you can't understand what's going on from the, in the company from their annual letter, it's either because the management team is intentionally misleading you by using confusing or vague language to cover up the fact that the business could be in trouble, or they simply don't understand their own business enough to explain it. Either way, you should not be investing with these people because at this point, you're basically just be gambling your money that these guys somehow can figure this business out even though they can't explain it to you. So you guys 